Good evening, proletariat! Welcome to Turbo Tuesday, the show where we test the metal of whatever boss Reddit is salivating over this week. As always, we've built a list designed to showcase our CEO of choice to test their business acumen. After a few short games, we'll give them a performance review and decide if they're likely to make it in the free meta, or if they'll need to be sent to a Siberian gulag. Today we're examining two bosses bred from the same stock. Both are machines, both are fusion monsters, both have ridiculous names, and most importantly, both are completely unplayable. Imperion Magnum the Superconductive Battlebot and A to Z Dragon Buster Cannon. But before we check out today's Corporate Stooges, a word about our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck, the best online site for database searching, deck building, and strategy articles, all conveniently located at www.ygoprodeck.com. Our first magnetic monstrosity is... Ooh. Sorry, this name is just a little bit too ethnic for this company. Let's check the resume of... You mind if I call you Imperion? This is a combination of Valkyrie on the Magna Warrior and Berserky on the Electromagnet Warrior, and it must be fusion summoned with those materials and can't be specialed otherwise. This counts out tag combos and cheating. Once per turn during either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or monster effect, you can negate the activation and if you do, destroy the card. If this face-up card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, you can special summon both one Valkyrie on the Magna Warrior and one Berserky on the Electromagna Warrior from your hand or deck ignoring their summoning conditions. Our second conducting chungus is A to Z Dragon Buster Cannon. While we've had a little bit of trouble in the past with other members of your... family, I'm willing to give you a shot. Let's check out that resume. This monster must be special summoned by banishing cards you control with the above original names, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Another monster that circumvents cheating, eh? During either player's turn, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card or monster effect, you can discard one card, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. During either player's turn, you can banish this card, then target one each of your banished ABC Dragon Buster and XYZ Dragon Cannon, special summon them. Two strong applicants, but we've only got one position. With that, let's send our leaders to the Percy Ladder. Imperion has selected as its opponent, Dinosaur. This is a perfect proving ground for our fledgling CEO. No deck deals more damage on the draw than Dino does. Let's see what Imperion can accomplish going first. They'll lead with a copy of A Hero Lives, taking 4,000 points of damage against the OTK deck. My, 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 a very poor life point management. Afterwards, they'll normal summon a copy of Doki Doki to get an Alpha the Electromagnet Warrior, adding a copy of Valkyrie on hand, Link summoning a Verte Anaconda, and using its effect to send Polymerization, how gauche! Under these circumstances, the card almost seems fair. Their opponent will lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance and a Lost World, which fetches the negate, and now they are a sitting duck with a monster with 500 attack points on their side of the field. They could go to battle phase at any time, but their opponent elects to flex. They'll send a copy of Coddles to get a copy of Pill. They'll Enigma Zud and then trigger a couple of effects, destroying this copy of Imperion. It floats, but into effectively nothing. They'll special a Baby Sarasaurus, then activate the effect of Overraptor, tagging out for a Miscellaneous Horse, and specialing a Giant Rex from deck. They'll go into Pen's Attack, activate Double Evo Pill, go into UCT, activate Giant Rex's effect, and wow, this is... Very, very much game. An absolutely imbecilic showing from Imperion. A to Z Dragon Buster Cannon is hitting only slightly above its weight class, electing to play against Generator, but as this is a post-ECTO build, they'll have to contend with Negates. I'm excited to see what the plan is. Their opponent will lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, drawing a couple of cards off the top of the deck, followed by a quest, which will get them everything they could ever desire. They'll set the stage and pass back. Okay, let's see what happens. They'll go for a copy of Rumbles, and then use Stage's effect to special summon four tokens. That's one negate they're going to have to contend with. They'll then activate a copy of Hand Destruction. It passes. Next, they'll activate the effect of Rumbles. They'll banish the Rumbles in Graveyard, but it is unfortunately met with a Territory. That draws into another called by the Grave, which forces the Rumbles, and now they can actually play. They'll normal summon a copy of Rescue Cat to tag into two Ojama Blue. Where is this going? They'll go to Battle Phase and attack into one of the tokens, taking 15 and, oh my goodness, adding Ojama Match and Ojama Magic in the process. They'll normal summon that bad boy back and add three cards to hand before activating the effect of Ojama Blue again, firing another Ojama Match, normal summoning another Ojama Blue, and prompting a boss fight from their opponent. They'll go into a Swords to destroy the two remaining monsters on the field, but I think the A to Z pilot has drawn enough. They'll activate Ojama Simulation, revealing XYZ to get all these terrible cards on their side of the field, followed by Ojama Simulation summoning only B and C, activating a copy of Union Hanger afterwards. Next, they'll link summon a copy of Phoenix, activate the Grave Effect of C, and destroy this copy of Generator Stage. Next, they'll go ahead and link summon a copy of Equimax, going to XYZ Dragon Cannon, which actually is not a once per turn, and an ABC Dragon Buster getting rid of the Rumbles. Oh my gosh! This is incredible! 
With two cards in hand, they have both a negation and a banish off of the tagged out of ABC. Should worse come to worse, they can also use Equimax to negate. They'll go to a Lone Fire Blossom. They'll activate A to Z in response to that. Afterwards, their opponent will activate Stage and set two at end step. They'll tag out of A to Z to go into XYZ and ABC and activate ABC's effect, banishing the stage. For turn, they draw a copy of Rescue Cat. They'll just go to Battle Phase, attack directly with Equimax, prompting a Summon Limit, and activate ABC Dragon Buster to banish the Equimax so it can get in for lethal. Well, we're back. And just how do the Petit Bourgeois perform? Let's consult our super scientific metrics above. First, let's isolate Empyreon. I'm awarding Big Bunglion a 2 in terms of consistency. While there are hands without Prisma or Polymerization, Verte ensures you can make this malicious magnet quite often in its associated archetype. I'm awarding this Polarius Pest a 1 in terms of investment. There's no splashing this 17-card Monster Engine and 9-card Poly Searcher in anything but this. Finally, I'm awarding Yugi's Daddy a 1 in terms of payoff. You've got to jump through Superman 64 tier hoops to amass even one negate, and the card still has the audacity to float into its components from deck, not from graveyard. Next, let's assess A to Z. I'm awarding the Avatar of the Alphabet a 1 in terms of consistency. This deck is girthy with garnets, and while Ojama Blue turns on the entire play, you need an extremely specific turn 1 setup from your opponent to make it. I'm awarding this Superconductive Contact Fusion a 2 in terms of investment. While our build is littered with... Litter. It's not outside the realm of possibility to splash a few extra monsters into an existing Ojama ABC build to access this more often. Finally, I'm awarding Kaiba's Daddy a 3 in terms of payoff. Over the course of the combo, you add a half dozen cards to your hand, which Xyz, the decade-old boss monster, can convert into pops of your opponent's field. Yes, the final product is a single negate, but it floats fantastically into two monsters that are individually powerful in their own right. Unlike ADCC, this monster can more than manage to take over the game on its own. With that said, my final verdict is... Congratulations to A to Z. Apologies to Magnet Warriors, but it's time for Imperion's Last Order. Cameraman, get the microwave.